Turn our, our Bibles to Second Kings, chapter one. The book of Second Kings, chapter one. And we have a, a familiar story here, but it's not so familiar if you've never heard it before. Mm. And this is not one that, that I'm quite acquainted with. Nevertheless, I've read it before. Mm. We have heard so much about Elijah, haven't we? Yes, we have. Elijah the prophet. Mm -hmm. Elijah the prophet was such a great prophet of God. I was actually reading this today. And uh, what I was actually seeing today in my time of prayer and meditation regarding the life of Elijah. Mm -hmm. Although Elijah was such a great and mighty man of God, Elijah, to me in a sense, was like, Noah, where Noah preached for 120 years, mm. and Noah only had seven converts in his church, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. Wow. Pastor Noah, if you want to call him a pastor, yeah. Pastor Noah only had seven converts in his church, and they were all members of his immediate family. Three sons, three daughter-in-laws, and one wife <laughs> and himself made the eight for 120 years and the Bible declares that Noah was a righteous man mm -hmm. this righteous man lived such a righteous life one who communicated with God one who God communicated with and yet he couldn't communicate good enough to win any members outside of his immediate family was his preaching bad? No. no, no so. Was he not anointed? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. But yet, he couldn't attract anybody to his church. Mm -hmm. Yet there were other pastors, if you like, mm -hmm. that were attracting people to their big mega churches. Mm -hmm. Now look at Elijah. Mm -hmm. Elijah was such a powerful man of God. Mm -hmm. hey. Elijah, the Bible tells us, he had such an anointing upon his life. Mm. And the first account of Elijah is when he showed up, when Elijah showed up in front of King Ahab because there was national crisis going on in Israel. Mm. The people were grossly backslidden. They were following Baalism. They were following Jezebel and Ahab mm. and giving themselves over to idolatry. And because of that, God's anger was now stirred against his people. Mm -hmm. So he sent the prophet Elijah to meet King Ahab and tell King Ahab what God is going to do. Mm -hmm. God says to Elijah, I'm going to shut up the heavens for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And all you've got to do, proclaim the word that I put in your mouth yeah. and speak that the heavens with Old, the rain for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Elijah did that in the presence of King Ham. Mm -hmm. And there was famine yeah. and drought throughout the land for three and a half years, just like God said. Mm -hmm. And during the three and a half years, God provided for his servant Elijah, where he was refreshed at the brook Cherith. And was fed morning and evening by raven, bread and meat, bread and meat, morning and evening. That was a diet. Bread and meat. Didn't get no veg. It didn't get no cereal. It didn't get no fruit. But these nourishment he got from the bread and meat. And he drank from the brook. Now the Bible says the brook dried up. Yes. And God commanded his servant to go to Zarephath mm -hmm. in Lebanon, mm -hmm. or Sidon, the home country of Jezebel, because that's where Jezebel came from. Jezebel was not an Israelite, she was a Sidonian, a part of Lebanon, mm -hmm. as it is today. And uh, King Heab, a Jewish king, he married to this foreign woman, wow. Princess Jezebel, because yeah. her father was the king. Mm. 
of uh, his country. Yeah. Eth Baal, his name was, and he was also the priest presiding over the worship of Baal. So Jezebel knew not better. She came from that background. Yes, yes. But the king married her, brought her into Israel, mm -hmm. and now she was ready now to abandon Jehovah worship. Mm -hmm. The worship of the true God of Israel in preference for her gods. Mm -hmm. And her husband allowed her to do so. Mm -hmm. King Ahab allowed her to do so. Mm -hmm. So now God says, Okay, I'm going to teach Israel a lesson and show Israel where the prosperity come from. That it does not come from the Baals that they worship. Because Baal also is associated with fertility and the weather, with water. So they will ascribe all the blessings unto Baal and show a Baal this idol God with various gifts. So that they can continually be prosperous. So God caused his servant Elijah to shut up the heavens for three and a half years. And it didn't matter how much they prayed to Baal, Baal could not break that curse. No. Baal could not send water for them. No. He could not give them, hallelujah, what they needed. No. And still the people persisted in their idolatry and backslid instead. Mm. So we see God providing for his servant at the brook cherry when it dried up he said go to Zarephath the same own town and the same country of Jezebel you see how God works mm -hmm. where Jezebel came from mm -hmm. God sent his prophet mm -hmm. and there was a woman there who was a heathen woman mm -hmm. who would have worshipped Baal but there was something in this woman's life yeah. that God could use. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. To minister unto his servant. Mm -hmm. When he got there, the woman was just picking up a few sticks, yeah. firewood if you like, yeah. to make fire. Mm -hmm. So that she could cook her last meal for her and her son. Oh, yes. And the servant of God, the prophet, yeah. Elijah said to her, fetch me some water first. And then he said to her while she was going to fetch the water, he says, Bake me a cake first. She says, I only have a little bit of flour left. Just for me and my son, we're going to heat it and then die. He says, do what I tell you. So the woman fetching water, he drank water. The woman um, um, out of a meager provision of flour, she cooked or uh, fried the dumpling, whatever it is, and brought it unto the servant of God. And he ate. And the woman miraculously had food enough for her and her son and also other family members yeah. other relatives of her family they had short the famine yeah. hallelujah yeah. and it came a time when the woman's son died and uh, Elijah got news of it because he was stopping at the woman's house. Yeah. And he said to God, Elijah the prophet, the man of God cried out, God, why have you brought this trouble upon this woman? Look, her son is now dead. And Elijah, my God, allowed Elijah, Elijah, to raise that woman's son back to life. This is before Jesus came on the scene, you know? Yes. The prophet of God, hallelujah, God used him to resurrect. That woman's dead son. Mm -hmm. Now you'd have thought, this is what I saw as I was meditating this morning. You would have thought Elijah would have had a big, big congregation now. What a miraculous work he did in raising this woman's son. You think he would have a big church? Mm -hmm. Everybody would come out of town. Yeah. Nothing like that happened. No. Sometimes I've often heard. People say, well, if all the miracles were happening more, more people would give their lives to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I do not know whether that is so. Because mm -hmm. those who will be saved will be saved. Yes. Whether they see a miracle or not, they still will be saved. Yes. Hallelujah. God will speak to their heart and God will draw them yes. unto him. Yes. Yes. So he'll to perform this great miracle. And he was basically by himself. Mm -hmm. It was like it. Nothing happened. It went unnoticed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you think if you perform a big miracle like that, everybody would be flocking you and saying wonderful things about you. Yeah. 
not Elijah. Elijah was on his own. He was on his own. God used him to shut down the rain. And God provided for him. While many were starving in Israel, while many were dying, God provided for a servant in a, in a very unusual way. Supernatural way. Using birds. More or less unclean birds. To feed. To feed his servant. Yes. But Elijah wasn't fussing. No. Some of us, we couldn't have been fed that way. Because we are too picky picky. Yeah, and we're too choosy choosy. Too proud. Too proud. Yes. We can't eat from this person. We can't eat from this. We can't eat from that person. We don't eat from this person. We don't eat here. We don't eat there. But bless your food and sanctify it. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> God will clean it up. Hallelujah. Yes, and yes. protect you. If he eat any dead thing, he will not harm you. That's right. So, we see Elijah and his home at the brook. We see Elijah and his own at the widow's house being fed, being taken care of. And now, God said to Elijah, when three and a half years were about to expire, God said, go and show yourself to Ahab. All these years, Ahab had a death warrant over Elijah's head, dead or alive. There was a bounty on his head, and they had all the bounty killers out there. <laughs> Hunting, looking, pursuing, but they couldn't find Elijah. Where was Elijah? He was in the cliff of the rock. He was in the secret place of the Most High. Oh, glory to God. And no search warrant, hallelujah, that Ahab had on him. No one could find the man mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Nobody. Because God hid him. Yes. You see, your enemy and my enemy, if God don't want them to find us, they can't find us. Yeah, right. We'll just walk in front of them and they'll see us and they will blind. They'll that's still not see us. Exactly. And then somebody said, do you see who, 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 who passed you? Pass, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The same person that you're looking for. <laughs> How come I miss that? <laughs> oh God, come and let your head turn the other way and you walk this way. Exactly. Why the person, yeah? All right, okay. Exactly. Hallelujah. Yeah? God. The person is there yeah. and you are there and the person got distracted and looking that way and you just walk past and they never see you. No. By the time they, they get the message from a friend, you out of sight. Out of sight. <laughs> God knows God. how to protect us. Exactly. Hallelujah. The Lord. Oh, glory to God. God. Thank you. Glory to God. So Elijah was commanded by God to show himself to Ham mm. at the end of the three and a half years. Elijah went and presented himself to King Ahab and King Ahab said, he said, you that trouble Israel, are you he that trouble Israel? And Elijah said, no, 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 it's not me, it's you and Jezebel and your household, it's you who have caused this drought upon the land. Because what Elijah um, was accused of is basically it's because of you why there's no rain mm. your prayer shut up mm -hmm. the heavens that it does not rain mm -hmm. and because there's no rain look how many people have died in Israel look how many animals have suffered in Israel you are the troublemaker because you prayed a prayer that caused God to shut down <laughs> to shut down these things to shut up the heavens that it doesn't rain. But he says it's because of your sin, because of your wickedness. That is why God used me to shut down, hallelujah, heaven. To turn off all the tops of heaven. Oh, glory. From pouring down rain upon you. Oh, hallelujah. So sometimes some business can shut down. Even in the house of God. And it's God who shut it down. Because God is teaching us a lesson. He is trying to show us that our blessing does not come from ourselves. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come from the earth. It comes from above. It comes from Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we must remember Him and forsake our idolatry mm -hmm. and turn unto our God. Mm -hmm. Forsake yes. all the wickedness and turn unto righteousness. Yes. Turn unto true holiness. Yes, Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. So, now, 
before God allowed his servant to pronounce rain upon the land, sin had to be dealt with. So Elijah said to King Ahab, bring all the false prophets, the prophets of Baal, and all those prophets who sit around your wife Jezebel's table, <laughs> bring them up to Mount Carmel, and we go to have a showdown today. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise we go to discover and find out who is the true God. Amen. And uh, here did according to the words of Elijah and summon all the false prophets and Mount Carmel and all the people of Israel, as many as they could gather. The people of Israel gathered on Mount, si uh, Mount Carmel. And uh, Elijah said to the people, he said, Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Some words like that. I know Joshua said that. Yeah. But he, he said that um, the God who answers by fire, he is the true God. Mm -hmm. He will be, he is the true God. Yeah. The God who answered by fire. Because he told the people, you know, to basically set themselves in harmony. Mm -hmm. And nobody really took Elijah up in exactly what he was really saying. Mm -hmm. Because they were still worshipping Baal. Yes. Yeah. And now showdown time. So, Elijah, he told the false prophet to build their halter, mm. to get their bullock, cut their bullock, put it on the halter, and to call upon their God. And the God who answers by fire, he is a true God. Mm. They did that, and they had no response from their Baal. Mm. Baal didn't answer them. Now when it was Elijah's turn, he built the altar, set all the stones in order, and the, the wood built, had trenches, dug deep trenches, got the bullet, cut it up, put it on the altar, and he poured water, holy for water, loads of water, mm -hmm. all on the altar, and on the sacrifice, and on the wood, and in the trenches, mm -hmm. to make it difficult. Mm -hmm. He made his challenge more difficult than the false prophets of Baal. Mm -hmm. And what happened? He called upon God. And the God who answers by fire answered and can soon everything, even lick up the water. Yes. Hallelujah. The fire of God licked up all the water. The Lord. And that day, Elijah prayed and the heavens opened up and there was a mighty downpour of rain. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. He went home and he told his wife Jezebel what happened, how all the prophets are dead now. Elijah killed them all. <laughs> she got very, very angry yes. and she threatened. She sent a, a threatening word out to Elijah. Yes. She said, if I don't make your life by tomorrow, like what like my prophets that you have killed, may the gods kill me. Tomorrow you're a dead man, Elijah. Elijah heard the words and he became afraid and he ran and he said he had a servant with him and he left the servant. No, he said, man, you can't come with me. I'll, I'll leave you. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> Don't bother have him with me. I'm a dead man. <laughs> Save your life. Save your life, brother. <laughs> Save your life, brother prophet. <laughs> Don't bother follow me any further. And Elijah went on his way and then he rested under the juniper tree in depression, mm. in a state of deep depression, mm. and his prayer was, God, take my life. Mm. Kill me, God. I don't want to live anymore. Don't let Jezebel catch up with me and kill me. You kill me. Mm. Let me just die in my sleep, right here mm. under this juniper tree. Mm. And God sent an angel. The angel woke him up mm. and supernaturally kept, fed him. Oh. He went back to sleep again. The angel said, wake up. Heat again. And they hit again and said, the journey is too great for you. Yes. You have a long journey. Yeah. It's not over. Mm -hmm. You're not dying. God has not answered that prayer. <laughs> You're not dying today. <laughs> All right, no, yeah. So the Bible says he got up and he went in the strength of the food that he had. Mm -hmm. 
But he was still discouraging her. And uh, he went for 40 days. He was there in Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. Mount Oreb, mm -hmm. the same mountain that God met Moses and gave the Ten Commandments. Oh, right. So Elijah was there up on the mountain. And then he heard mighty earthquake. God was not in it. Shaking of the rock. God was not in it. Fire. God was not in it. Mighty wind. God was not in it. Then he heard a still small voice. What are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah said, God, they have killed all your prophets and torn down your altars. And I am the only one left. And they're trying to kill me too. God asked him a second time. The same words. He said the same words back to God. God asked him again. The same words. What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah said, God, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altar. And I'm the only one left of your prophets. And they're trying to kill me too. That's why I'm here. I'm hiding. I don't know what to do. And God said to Elijah, Go back the way you came. What? And go on a night as a hell to be king over Syria. Oh. And anoint Jehu to be king over Israel. Mm -hmm. And anoint Elisha to succeed you as prophet. Besides, Elijah, I have reserved 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed on their knees and not kissed Baal. They have not worshipped Baal. I've got 7,000 prophets, 7,000 Elijah, that you do not know of. That are true to me. Yes. I say this so that we can understand. If you see the, the ministry of Elijah and the walk of Elijah, Elijah was on his own most of the time. Mm -hmm. Even though he did, did great works for the Lord, he was still on his own. Yes. The great miracles that he did, you think it would be flopped? Mm -hmm. You think he would have so many followers and so many congregation mm -hmm. in his church? Mm -hmm. Elijah, who did he have in his church? We see him on the mountain, Mount Horeb, just by himself, prophet, pastor, evangelist, by himself, in a state of deep depression. Doesn't know whether he's coming or going. And yet he was a great man, the great prophet of God. Now, he obeyed God and he anointed one. He didn't anoint the other two. He didn't go, he didn't cross the border to Syria. And he didn't anoint Jehu to be king over Israel. But he anointed Elisha, who was a farmer. He was plowing his oxen when Elijah met him and cast his mantle upon Elisha. And then from that moment, Elisha decided, I'm going to follow this man. <laughs> I'm going to follow him. And Elijah said to Elisha, what, what have I done to you? Stay, 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 stay. No, no, no. God told me to anoint you and I've come to anoint you. He didn't tell me to tell you to follow me. No, no, stay. No, no, stay. You can't follow me. I'm, I'm not so reliable for you to follow me. <laughs> you know, I'm the man that's wrong here and there, you know. I don't think you can really keep up with me. <laughs> but Elisha decided I'm going to follow you. So he killed his oxen, cooked them, <laughs> and have a big party for all his families and wave goodbye to his family and started to follow Elijah the prophet from that time on. So here we see him with another man. Mm. Another servant mm. following him. Elijah. Mm. Learning from him. Yeah. Studying from him. Mm. But throughout the life of Elijah, you don't see Elijah in great company. Mm. Yet he was one of the greatest of all the prophets. Mm. Is this making any sense? Mm was one of the greatest of the prophets, but many times you see him alone, you see him on his own. And this was the man who was taken up in the whirlwind and chariot of horses and fire into heaven. The man who never saw death, the man who cheated death, the man who Jezebel wanted to kill and Ahab wanted to kill and all the soldiers wanted to kill. 
and nobody could kill this man. Not even death could kill this man. This man straight up into heaven, ruptured into heaven, where he is right now at this moment in heaven. Yes, yes. Who have not died? He still has got his hurt. His, he still has his hurt. The physical body in heaven. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory Two people that has gone up to heaven who have never tasted death. Mm. That's Elijah and Enoch before him. All right. oh, glory to God. Yeah. So here we go. Mm. In 2 Kings chapter 1, we have an account of after Hayab died. Ahab is the king that I'm just been talking about that Elijah was challenging mm -hmm. to live right. Yeah. The, the husband of Jezebel. Yeah. After he died, it says, Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. The Moabites were in check. They were in control. They were under subjection when in the time of King Ahab. But now Ahab is dead. So the Moabites decided, okay, now we are free now from the shackles of Israel because his son is on the throne, but his son is just weak. Mm. We're not going to listen to his son. <laughs> so this is what we're going to look at. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab and Azariah. Let's say Azariah. 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 That's one of the sons of Ahab. Mm -hmm. And he succeeded. He succeeded Ahab to the throne. And Azariah fell through, fell down through the lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that he go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto them, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire? of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he that came up to meet you? And they told these words. And they answered him, He was a hairy man, and girded with a girdle of leather, uh, leather uh, about his loins and uh, he said it is Elijah the teach by then the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with with 50 or read it again verse 9 and the king sent unto him a, a captain of 50 with his 50 and he went up to him and behold he sat on the top of a hill and he spake unto him Thou man of God, the king answered, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. And also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto him, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. 
And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. And then again he sent another. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you understand me? Yes. Yeah. Azariah mm. succeeded his father Ahab when Ahab died. Mm. Now, it says that Azariah, he was in his palace and he was upstairs in his palace in his upper chamber. Mm -hmm. And somehow he slipped and he fell uh. and he injured himself. So now he was laid up in bed. And the king Azariah wanted to know if he would recover from his injury. Mm. So he called messengers, sent the messengers away to, to Ed Edom. Is it Edom? Ekron. Ekron is a Philistine city. To Ekron and to Beelzebub one of the Baal gods, to inquire uh, um, from Baal, the dumb idol, yeah. whether he would recover or not. So this offended God. God said, is there not a God in Israel that you can inquire from, that you are sending messengers to Ekron, the land of the Philistine, and to Beelzebub, this false god, to find out whether you will recover from your injury or not? God said, because you have done this, you will not recover. You have inquired, you have consulted false gods. And you're not going to recover. So the messengers now, they were on their way to Ekron. And Elijah met them. He was up on the hill and the word of God came unto Elijah to stop these messengers. And tell the messengers exactly what in, um, God said about the king and his recovery. So Elijah told them what God said that your king will not recover. Go, go back, don't bother, go to Ekron. <laughs> so they didn't go to Ekron. So when they returned to the king, the king wondered, how come you come back so soon? Why have you come back so soon? I know that you have not been to Ekron. No way could you have gone to Ekron and come back already. No way. Well, they said we were stopped by Elijah. No, they didn't say they were stopped by Elijah. They said we were stopped by a man of God who told us that you are not going to recover. And the king said, what did he look like? What manner of man was he? So they said, oh, yeah, had the hairy, hairy garment and uh, with a belt around it. And he says, it's nobody else but Elijah the prophet it's like it, John the Baptist isn't it yes. like John the Baptist he wear that rugged camel yes. clothes with a belt around it so the description all the king needed to know just the description because nobody in town fit that description nobody in the church fit that description he is uniquely dressed hallelujah he wasn't dressed in silk garments or anything like that so so the king sent messengers now, this captain, uh, general, with 50 men, with, which are soldiers, 50 soldiers to go and arrest the man of God. And they came to where Elijah was and they said, the king said you must come down. In other words, come down, let me arrest you and bring you to the king. And Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and burn you up. <laughs> and your 50 men with you. And the fire came down instantly and burned up the captain and his 50 men. Burned them up. Elijah, the, the prophet of fire, hallelujah, who stopped <coughs> the rain, called on fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice upon Mount Carmel. This prophet, oh glory to God. And then we see the king sent another 50 men with its captain and likewise the same thing happened unto them. The king also sent another 50 men with another captain. But this time this captain was more smart. He realized the first two battalions that went, they were consumed. So his approach now to the man of God was different. He didn't call out, hey man of God, king say you must come down. He went humbly 
before the man of God. And he went down on his knees before Elijah and pleaded for his life. He says, I realize what has happened to the first 50 and the captain, the second 50 and the captain, I realize that 102 men that the king sent got all burnt up because you called on fire from heaven. They did not respect you. They respected the king, Azariah, Ahab's son, yeah. more than they respect you. Mm. But I come in humility, spare my life and the life of these 50 men with me. And when he did that, humble himself, the word of God came to Elijah. Come down, Elijah. Go with him. Yeah. So Elijah went with him to the king. Yeah. And when he went to the king, he saw the king. And Elijah told the king exactly what God said. And shortly after that, the king died of his injury. He fell. So he had an accident. Yeah. And injured himself. But because he did not inquire, he did not consult God, but wanted to consult idols. God became offended by that. And God said, you're not going to live. Hallelujah. I am your doctor. I am your physician. I am your consultant. I am your chief consultant. You should have consulted me first. Oh, Jesus. So looking at the life of Elijah, we saw God and worked through this man of God. Shutting up the heavens, calling on fire from heaven more than once. Because the word of God was in him, the word of God was in his mouth. And God used Elijah mighty fully to do great and awesome work. Mm. Yet, when you look at... <laughs> when you look, if you were to look at his achievement, like uh, we would look at it naturally, we'd say he was a loser. Mm. <laughs> If we were to look at him numerically of what he achieved, we would say he's a loser. If we were to look at him and judge him by the size of his congregation, we would say he's a loser. Because he was a man mainly on his own. And we see even the very last, he was pursued by one man. There were other prophets that were watching what was going on when God said, go from Gilgal to Bethel. Mm -hmm. Everywhere they went, there were 50 prophets somewhere watching yeah. and, and, and trying to talk to Elisha. Don't you know your master is going to be taken away from you today? And he says, hold your peace. Don't distract me. I'm following my master. Mm -hmm. I have no time to stop and talk because mm -hmm. if I do, I might miss my master. Yeah. And then, so that was from Gilgal to Bethel. And not from Bethel to Jericho. And each time Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, don't follow me. But he said, I must pursue you. I must pursue you. And the time they got to, to, to Jericho, they met some other prophets, swiftly prophets saying to Elisha, don't you know your master is going to be taken from me? He says, hold your peace, hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, but hold your peace. Uh, I can't get into no conversation with you. And then from Jericho to Jordan, Elisha smote the Jordan River with his mantle. The Jordan parted and he crossed the Jordan River. He crossed the Jordan River. And when he crossed the Jordan River, immediately, unknowingly, unexpectedly, phew, chariot, chariot, whirlwind, and chariot came down chariot of horses and fire and Elijah got into it straight up into heaven and his mantle dropped and Elisha saw him when he was going up and said my father my father the chariots of Israel and his other horsemen but he saw him no more and then he picked up the mantle Elisha picked up Elijah's mantle and then he, he smote it the river and said where is the Lord God of Elijah and the water the water parted and it crossed over the other side. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Praise. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We must remember to inquire. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. First. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. First. Mm -hmm. To God. Yes. Yes. Consult God first yes. in whatever we do. Yes. Elijah didn't do these things 
of his own, yeah. God directed him to do what he did. All those miracles that he performed, God directed him. God told him to which brook to go to. God told him when the brook dried up to go to Zarephath, and there you're going to find a woman. I've commanded a widow woman to feed you. And he went exactly where God told him. We see God told him now it's time to go back to Elijah, to Elisha, no, to Ahab. Go back to Ahab and tell him what I'm going to do. I'm going to send rain. Mm -hmm. But the land must be um, cleansed from all this Baalism and Baal worship. And we see God answered by fire, consumed the altar, and Elijah killed the prophets of Baal. And we see God told him to go, go and anoint whomsoever, and he went and he did anoint one of the three that God said, and then God took him to be with him. Wow. This man walked in God. He walked in the spirit of God, the spirit of Elijah. Sometimes you have to learn to walk alone. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If we want the spirit of Elijah, we have to learn to walk alone yes. like Elijah did. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise God. 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 We need to learn how to God. set aside all others. Yes. Hallelujah for God. Oh, glory to God. Elijah walked alone. He knew how God sometimes cannot use us because we love the crowd too much. We don't know how to put people aside and put things aside. Elijah gave his all for the Lord and God rewarded him. Praise God. And I believe he will be coming back again. The same Elijah. As a matter of fact, Malachi closed. The whole testament, Malachi closed talking about Elijah. And he will say what? The spirit of Elijah, he'll send his messenger who will turn the hearts of his people back to him. Revelation also talks about one of uh, two prophets, uh, two witnesses who will come in the time of great tribulation. And it is assumed that one of those prophets is surely Elijah. Who never saw death, but God will send him back and he'll come in the power that he, and that, that he had before, in the spirit that he had before. And we were preaching in the time of the great tribulation when the Antichrist is on the scene. He will be preaching. And the Bible says that these two witnesses, they will be killed. And for three and a half days, they will not be buried. And the whole world will see them. And, in, in, and uh, miraculously, they will resurrect after three and a half days and go straight up into heaven. Hallelujah! Bless the Lord! Bless the Lord! Father, we want to praise you and just bless you and just give you thanks, Father, for this word, Holy Father God. Help us to remember to consult you first, my God. Sometimes we are in the habit of consulting friends, consulting others, Lord, consulting this and this and that, oh Father, and you and use you as a last resort. But we see, Holy Father, that you can get offended, you can get grieved when your children, Lord, do, don't put our trust in you. When we put our trust in idols, when we put our trust in other things than you, oh Father God. But help us, Lord, to remember you and trust you and trust you like a, um, Elijah did, Holy Father, that God, you can use us. Use us, Lord, even to go against the Ahabs of our day, the Jezebels of our day, Holy Father, the kings and the queens of, of evil, oh Father God. Hallelujah. Help us not to become discouraged. Thank you, Father. Help us not to be discouraged. Help us not to be discouraged. When we see things don't pan out, Lord, the way we expect them to. When we see things don't turn out the way we expect them to. Help us, Holy Father, to be encouraged, O oh, Father God. Hallelujah. That we can live holy and righteous lives, O oh, Father God. And we may not see, O oh, God, what we expect. We may not be approved. By many, O oh God, but once you have approved us like you approved Elijah, Father, we thank you that we are in good company. Hallelujah. That we are the blessed of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. Bless each and every one of us, Father. Strengthen us, Father, even as we go from this place, God. Lord, we ask you that you will go before us and guide us and lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, thank you.